The broads landscape has never stood still. Um, the broads themselves, although they were peat diggings in the 9th, 10th, 11th centuries, have always wanted to silt up. And the way in which people have controlled the way in which that landscape is looked after, the way in which the water has remained fresh rather than saline, though some of that may be changing, is absolutely fundamental to the future of the broads and the way in which the species who live in the broads and have it as their complete habitat will find the future and be able to develop the future. The broads is a fantastic place uh, for wildlife. It has, um, it has some species that are found nowhere else in the country. Um, and um, some really evocative species, things like bittern and, and marsh harrier uh, that can be seen quite quite frequently in the broads. So you have good populations of otters. Um, the place is buzzing with uh, dragonflies in the summer. There's lots of, of, of duck and wintering wildfowl in the winter. It's, it's just an, a, an amazing place to be. I think one of the things that I always think about when I think about the broads is cranes. Cranes, you know, it's it's just they're such a, a fantastic emblem. It's, it's one of our biggest birds, enormous, big, tall, probably the tallest bird in the UK, and for, for centuries has disappeared from the UK. But it's sort of very quietly come back and got established itself in the Norfolk Broads, and they're just amazing birds. It really evocative sound. It just it's the sound of wild places. It's just something that uh, it gave, it fills me with great optimism that that other species we've lost over the centuries could come back. Back. There's been a lot of capital investment on taking out phosphates. The farmers are now not putting so much fertilizers on, they're getting paid for looking after the, the land in that situation. And gradually we've seen the water quality get better th mainly through the plants and things we're finding in, in the dikes. Looking back on last summer, there's so much weed, water lilies and things I never thought I'd ever see back. And then when you look more closely in the dikes you see no end of fish, small fry, some really large roach and rudd. I think the broads are a really special place because they're right outside our doorstep and there's so much you can do in the area. Personally, I enjoy sailing with my dad on Hickling Board. Um, he races, but sometimes we just go out for half an hour on the broads and it's really beautiful. The broads are a man-made system, so without intervention, they would eventually silt up and revert back to marshland. Um, and eventually to woodland. So if we want to continue to enjoy the open water features and to be able to sail on the rivers, then we need to dredge to keep that system open. The biggest challenge perhaps facing the broadland catchment is that there are a huge number of different water users that rely on the water um, environment and we need to improve the way we work together to deliver the most benefits for the catchment both in water conservation and environmental improvement. The water of the broads uh, is surrounded by arable and old grass farmland and I've been working with farmers to try to uh, help them to understand the connection between the land and the water and how that farming practice can affect the water quality. I think the management of the farmland is improving all the time. Through our advice and other organisations that message is really getting across. Without water you have no civilization. but without decent quality water we would never have an environment worth caring about and the connection between those two poles if you like is ours as individuals. We know from the past of what happened to fish populations that you can really impact upon local nature through the most seemingly innocuous actions such as the detergent you use in your washing your clothes or the washing up liquid you use at the sink. So these very domestic acts actually have local, regional and even global consequences. It's an incredibly fragile environment and the fragility of that environment means that we have to be very careful indeed about the way in which we manage it for the future. We're looking at all sorts of options under the climate change patterns of the way in which the broads might have to develop but what is absolutely certain is that that biodiversity, that environment, that freshwater habitat is absolutely fundamental to the way in which we've got to think about the future for the broads.